I don't know what day it is today. I lost internet and my whole world has been thrown upside down and the Wi-Fi is gone and I can't watch streams and I can't browse the internet. I can't even look for... Anyway, this is Planet Zoo. This is a game about having a zoo. Think about if you've played Zoo Tycoon, this is the spiritual successor to those games, Zoo Tycoon and Zoo Tycoon 2. In Planet Zoo, you have complete freedom with what you build, how you build it. Well, I mean, not really how you build it. I mean, there's there's this building tool that you have to use. Otherwise, you know, you can use the pre-built stuff that I hate. I hate the pre-built stuff. The Planet Zoo is, according to the developers, a game about conservation, loving animals, and managing your zoo. For a lot of other people, it is about world building. Building a world that lives. This can be in Planet Zoo through animals and in Planet Coaster through various attractions and the decor around it. I own Planet Coaster. I think it's great, but it wasn't quite my jam. I thought it was going to be great, but I am I am more about building a living world instead of a static world. If you think about it, roller coasters are static. You build the coaster, you build the, the track, and then you have this entire area that is filled with track and that's all you can do with it. If you think about theme parks, everywhere the track goes that is away from the path, it's pretty much just trees and grass, maybe a river. In zoos, in zoos the entire, I guess, zoo lives. There's buildings with life in them, there's plants, there's water, there's food, there's animals everywhere. On the paths, there are people. Zoos are f much more alive, in my opinion, than theme parks. So when this game got announced uh, uh, months back, straight away, I was extremely excited. I couldn't sit still for all of those months waiting. And then on the 24th of September, the beta happened. The beta that by now is over, and I'm very sad about it, and I have to wait less than a month to, for it to come out but i have no internet now so i don't know what i'm doing with my life some cable broke somewhere along the way and we don't know which one and we're gonna buy some cables and hopefully like replace them and if that doesn't work the isp has to come over you know, the internet service provider with their engineers and in true isp fashion they said we'll come over somewhere between now and eight days you you never realize how much you take the internet for granted when it's gone. I mean, I still have 4G on my phone, which is great, but that's not unlimited. Well, it is, but it isn't. It's it's unlimited in the way where even if I go over my bundle, I still have it, but very slow. So I can't watch videos on there either. Uh, the Wi-Fi of my neighbors is passworded and they're like, our internet isn't great, so you can go on it, but it sucks. So what's the point? It was like, <sighs> So while I'm making this video, I have no actual way of uploading it when it's finished. So I'm just sitting here, pretty much waiting, killing time. And the best way to kill time, in my opinion, is probably to, is to play other games. But Steam has this always online thing for most games. So there's a couple of games I can play, but they're not the games that I want to play. The last day of the beta, the 8th of October, the internet dropped. So I couldn't actually like finish this park that I was working on. I wanted to build a Springbok a habitat as well. Uh, next week, hopefully, you'll get a habitat building for the Formosan Black Bear. Yeah, be excited for that. I mean, along the way, you'll see sort of what that exhibit will look like. Uh, this, this park was originally built as a lion sanctuary where I had a bunch of lions, they had babies, and I sent those babies into wild for a community challenge that the beta had. That was successful, I had a lot of fun, and then Frontier was like, Alright, so we think that animals have babies way too easy. So we're gonna nerf that into the ground, yay! So now it's actually really difficult to breed animals in this game, which sucks because there's this online market. In the bottom left, you see the different currencies I have. I have cash and I have the leaf currency, which is the conservation credit. The online market that other people can put their animals on you buy and sell those for those leaves. And because breeding became more difficult, the prices rose incredibly hard. For an African elephant, 
I had to pay around four to eight thousand leaves. Before that, I had to pay somewhere around 1,200. And if you have those animals that do actually breed really well, such as the warthogs or the ostriches, they don't make many leaves because the market is flooded with them. Like, the value of something drops, the more of it comes on, like, comes available. So if I have a diamond, one small diamond, it's the only diamond in the world. Th that diamond's value is incredibly high. It's, it's the only diamond in the world. Everyone wants to have it, the people with money at least. So it's incredibly valuable. If I have 10 million of these diamonds, lots of people can buy them, so the value drops. And that's exactly what has happened in this game. Lots of people had lots of animals, Frontier nerfed it, lots of people had no animals. So the people that did have the animals were like, wow, I can make loads of credits with this. So no one could buy them. So I wonder what will happen when the full game is released. Anyway, I'm building a habitat here. I didn't even mention what I was doing. I'm building a habitat here for my Indian rhinoceroses. You know, those incredibly big tank puppies with pointy noses. No, they're from Asia. They're from like a very small part of Asia and they do like a lot of plants. And that's what I mean with world building. I am more of a world builder than I am building uh, houses and decorating buildings and stuff like that. You'll see me build a shelter, but it's not levels of, for example, if you want to see some incredibly crazy stuff, Silverettes. If you Google that or YouTube it, you'll see him build some incredible stuff. And I'm just there like, I cannot do that, so I'll just stick to world building. And in my opinion, I'm really good at that. I can make incredibly good looking, in my opinion, habitats for my animals. And that's because they require a amount of foliage. They require plants and, and trees. The thing is, if you plant like four big trees, they will fill up that bar for foliage. But if I plant lots of small bushes, the whole habitat is filled up more, the animals can walk through it, it looks a lot greener, and it doesn't look as empty. And that's where rocks come in. The rocks don't count towards anything. They're pure for decor. They're pure there to make it look a tiny bit more alive. And people don't seem to value rocks in this game. Well, of course, you're only looking at this if you're interested in Planet Zoo, which only like five, maybe six people are. And then there's like 10 people that watch this for me. So hello, 16 people that will watch this. I like this game a lot, and that's what I've been doing for the past two weeks. This beta ran from the 24th of September till the 8th of October. So, I got about 100 hours of this beta played, and I love it. I absolutely adore this game. I was, I was waiting for this type of game, pretty much just a 2019, 2018, 2017 version of Zoo Tycoon 2. I love animals. What can I say? Animals are cool. Would I recommend this game to you? Yes and no. While this game is very pretty looking in my opinion, and the gameplay is great, the building, this includes pathing and making buildings, is difficult. It's really difficult to get into. Uh, and when I started playing Planet Coaster, like 2016 it came out, I believe, I had all these great ideas of what I would build as a theme park. I would build a roller coaster in a row of houses that would at the same time be the decor for those houses, for those roller coaster and stuff like that. And you, you open up the sandbox and you have this giant, empty, flat world where you can build everything. And I panicked. I literally panicked. There was so much that I could do there that I just had... A, a giant overload of I have so many possibilities here I don't know what to do and I just I just freaked out and closed the game and I eventually I tried building it and I couldn't because whereas building a house is easy just like in Minecraft you build a dirt hut making it look good is where it gets hard and it's and it can be honestly demotivating if you build something that you have in your mind and it doesn't look good. Like for example, I'm not entirely happy with the, the shelter that I built for my rhinos. I'm not entirely happy with the shelter I built for the people here. But at the same time, 
I am going to be happy with the shelter I'm going to build for the people over here. This elevated one. So it's it's like you take the good with the bad, you know? You, you learn along the way. You get better along the way. Also, watching videos about this will give you ideas of how to build stuff in here. But honestly, if you do it for the management of a zoo, I'm not sure. Because... In the beta, at least, it was very easy to manage a zoo up until the point where you got, I'd say, about six different species. Because while they are talking about animal conservation and stuff, and the animals have genes and they have different fur coats depending on their parents and stuff like that, they are pretty trigger happy to just have babies with their sisters and mothers and, and fathers. And incest is kind of rampant, but there's anti-conception. And that's where it gets, like, really difficult if you have, like, six, seven species. Because then you have to start tracking every single species that you have in your zoo. And, oh my god. It's fun, but it is difficult. And then there's one thing about the money. You saw that I, about, I had about 400,000 credits. That doesn't sound like a lot, but in this game, that's enough to build an entire zoo. Because you have these donation boxes. And those donation boxes are boxes? Yeah, boxes are incredibly overpowered. They 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 are the way to make money in this game. I'm not sure if Frontier will nerf them. I I expect them to. Because you can build one habitat, put a bunch of animals in there, put down a donation box, put down like a shop for balloons, wait 10 minutes, go get a sandwich, and come back and you'll have around 50,000 credits. And from that point on, you can start building whatever you want. Because nothing is incredibly expensive. But this is beta. It could change. But apart from that, this is a very, very good looking game. And the beta for me was incredibly promising. And I honestly cannot wait to play the full game. Make giant zoos that make my computer crash. Because while it is pretty, it is intensive for your computer. If you build a big zoo.